We don't have a way of calculating when's the optimal time. There are some methods for dealing with that, such as dynamic programming, but it implies, dynamic programming implies there's nothing you can do about it to affect future aspects. This is the so-called path independence function. And the whole point of having flexibility is precisely that you can do things so that um, uh, that powerful method uh, does not work for, uh, for us. So, and there's so many paths. I mean, if we think about 2000 samples of what may happen, that's only 2000 samples of what may be a million set possibility of paths as a combination of the different probabilities at different times uh, of prices and quantities and so forth. It's much too large to be searched. So the procedure is to define what we know as decision rules, the a priori condition for when to exercise flexibility. These a priori conditions may be set by higher level mandate. This is standard operating procedure and here's what you do. Or it could be, this is the way the management wants to behave and this is what, they, what we are looking at as how they will behave. So in the, an example of it is the one we used for the parking garage, which was uh, in the base case, I mean, we tried various samples at some other points, that is expand if the observed demand is greater than the capacity over two years. Whereas this implies you don't do it in advance, you wait until the demand is there, and you just don't take into account there's a, a special event that, uh, a one-time event that may not be repeated, so you might want to wait until you're sh more sure that the demand is going to be there, so you might wait two years. So it, it's not a stupid uh, one. It's not obviously the best one. You can try different ones, but it's say this is the way we're going to think about the management behavior. Now, this doesn't have to be a rule that applies over the entire period. For example, you might want to change it. That is, in the, if you got a 20 year lease on the land, which is the example appropriate to the garage case, you might say, well, we are only, we're not gonna expand in the last five years. It will be enough time to pay off for any investment so that the uh, decision rule is okay for the first 15 years, but not for the end of life, the last five years of it. So, it trying to mimic what would seem to make sense from a management point of view. Once you have that, the uh, automation of the implementation of flexibility is to say, as we go through, as a computer goes through time from period one to period two to period three, each period it checks to see whether the decision rule is invoked. That is, have the conditions be met? If the conditions have met, for example, the capacity is, has been less than the actual demand, then you would say, all right, we're going to make the investment to build an extra floor. It's going to cost money. It's going to increase the capacity. You include that expense in the cash flow. You increase the capacity for the analysis of the next period when the situation of the capacity is expanded. And so you can go through a simulation and maybe never the decision will be invoked. Maybe it'll invoke second year, third year, fifth year, eighth year. Could be invoked many times. And this process is very powerful in comparison with alternative features. So it can uh, analyze many flexibilities simultaneously. That is simultaneously because you might have decisions about plant capacity. May, you may also have decisions about pricing. You may say, well, I'm going to increase my plant capacity and I'm going to cut my price by 20% so I increase my market share or stimulate my market share. Or market's so good, I'm going to increase capacity, but I'm also going to raise prices. So you can have not just one flexibility, but a, a range of flexibilities that you can have and some that you may never have, never, never use. For example, if things are going well, you're not going to have the capacity to close the plant down. But if things are going badly, maybe that would be a flexibility you'd like to invoke under those circumstances. So that the simulation 
enables you to look at lots of different kinds of flexibilities in lots of different situations. Now, ultimately the question is, what's the value of this flexibility? Why should I go to the effort of creating this ability to change my system or to invoke it? Or, or how much do I get out of it? Maybe it's easy to, um, it doesn't require any extra effort to be able to have a uh, flexibility, for example, to close the plant. Maybe I don't have to do anything special in, in advance. But what's the value of having that thought? So you get the outcomes for a plan with flexibility. It's, for example, if we're doing it in, in monetary terms, it's NPV, it's expected NPV, the target curve. You get that with the flexibility, and then you compare them. And the value of the flexibility at the first order is the difference in the ENPVs, the expectations of the difference with and without the flexibility. And when you compare the target curves, you show where that value comes from. Is it comes from making it small at the beginning so we don't have losses? Is it coming from having greater capacity if needed? Um, but you can see that we can imagine, develop that idea by looking at the, com by comparing the target curves. So the takeaway from this first portion is simulation defines the outcome distributions, the target curves, and consequently the value of flexibility. It is computationally efficient. Secondly, it can deal with all kinds of uncertainties. It's not limited by some assumption that the distribution has to be this way or that way, or like the uh, dynamic program has to be path independent, et cetera. A nice aspect of it also is that it's relatively easy to explain to decision makers. Why? Because you say, well, look, we're looking at all the combinations to see what happens. You don't have any complicated math to explain. You don't have decision trees, which can be very complicated. We don't have any high powered theory, which is what's appropriate for a financial options analysis, which will be in the second half of the course. So the bottom line is that simulation can be a very good approach. It's powerful, it goes through lots of cases, and it's relatively easy to explain.